Welcome to the Daily Briefing from interest.co.nz. I'm David Chaston. Today we continue our look at the latest inflation data. We also take a closer look at home loan affordability, update our risk premium measures, and we'll wrap up with what the other media are reporting. Yesterday we reviewed the latest changes in inflation as measured by the Consumer Price Index. The September 2007 quarter prices rose less than expected by just about every expert, with the overall rise being just a tad under 1.8%. Clearly this means that the Reserve Bank is under little pressure to raise official interest rates. However, it is likely to keep its high interest rate policy because that keeps the cost of imports low and the tradables component of the CPI really low. The policy seems to be high interest rates to result in a high exchange rate to ensure prices stay low. It's helpful indeed that the pressure also seems to be coming off non-tradables inflation. It has declined to 3.7%, its lowest in five years. It's also interesting to see what keeps non-tradables inflation relatively high. We made a list of all items in the index that were up more than 5%. Out of a total of 140, it had few items on it, but what was on it were meat and poultry, local clothing services, housing, everything charged by the local councils, electricity and gas, household appliance repairs, dental and hospital services, train fares, books, primary and secondary education, and realtor fees. There's a clear pattern in that list. There is little pricing restraint by government agencies and a few other groups that have low levels of competition. Our home loan affordability work comes in two versions. We look at the affordability of a mortgage for someone who buys a house in the current market at a median price, assuming they have a median income. This work is based on a purchase with a 20% deposit. As we reported yesterday, it's virtually impossible for someone to afford such a house today on a single income. We also look at this affordability issue from a first home buyer's perspective. This work assumes a 25 to 29 year old is buying a property valued in the lower quartile and it is on the basis of a deposit amount that can be saved in four years depending on the median income in the region you live. First home buyers have some advantages in that the house values are lower and this translates into about an 8% take home pay benefit. However, our research shows that house price inflation is faster in the lower quartile and competition for properties is higher because buyers have been frozen out of the median priced houses have also been buying in this band. Even at 72% of take home pay for the mortgage payment for a single first home buyer earner, this is seriously unaffordable. But the problem lies not with the buyers. It has been caused by insufficient housing supply on the city fringes. And that in turn has been caused directly by land supply being restricted for political purposes. Essentially, a landowning generation has chosen to deny first home buyers their opportunity by restricting to supply to much less than demand. It is a selfish response, usually done in the name of environmentalism, and is risking rising intergenerational anger. Watch out New Zealand, we could have about to be hit with the consequences of the credit crunch. While one year swap rates are hanging in there at recent highs, which means that mortgage rates for the same term are unlikely to fall, five year swap rates are rising, having pushed up sharply above 8%. They're at last at this level in mid-July. Five year swap rates have been rising at a pace of about 10 basis points per week for the past month or so, and this will probably mean that we'll be continuing to see rises in the longer term mortgage rates, three, four and five year ones. Part of this is being driven by recent steady rises in US Treasury bond yields. For months now, these yields have been declining as the rush to safety has seen huge demand for these benchmark products. But that rush is slowing, and yields are now starting to move back up, reflecting the higher trends that have been going on for commercial bonds. This seems, it seems unlikely that New Zealand's risk premium will reduce to compensate as the international price of money rises. And that could well mean that we look back on October and feel that 9% fixed rate mortgage money is relatively cheap. And finally today, a quick wrap up of some other recent news. Major international banks, including Citigroup, are looking up setting a roughly $80 billion fund to buy ailing mortgage securities and other assets in a bid to prevent the credit crunch from further hurting the global economy. New Zealand investors are less optimistic than most of their peers in the Asia-Pacific region, according to an international investor tracking study. 
We are in general positive about the investment environment in the near future, but in the current climate we tend to favour low risk investments like fixed interest products, as opposed to products like equities. You can get more news and start with Newsmaker Views on our news page. Join us again tomorrow for the freshest finance news on the web. We'll see you then.